don't want to give gift. And God's gift is true. Mm -hmm. Don't look for God's gift, but pray for God to give you this gift. Mm -hmm. Amen. Finding fault. I won't be long this morning, and I won't be short. I'll be just the way God wants me. So I'm going to ask you all to stand, please. I'm going to read from John chapter 1, verses 44 through 51. John chapter 1, verses 44 through 51. Now Philip was a Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip finded Nathanael, Nathanael, and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And 46 is the key verse. And Nathanael, Nathaniel said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no God. In other words, he's an honest, upright, straight man. Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, before that Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believe it thou, thou shalt see greater things than these. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. And this is my prayer for the Father's house, verse 50, the last part. Thou shalt see greater things than these. Yeah. In Jesus' name, y'all may be seated. Thank you. Thank you. One pleasure that I have <clears throat> is being able to drink coffee or whatever, and sit down and just talk across the table, eye to eye. I enjoy being with people, but I enjoy being with them on one-on-one or two-on-one or something like that. And I take pleasure in being with each one of y'all. Each one of y'all are important because each one of y'all have been sent here by God. You're here because God brought you here. I'm here because God brought me here. Amen. And He brought me here to love and to care for y'all. Y'all are very important to me. And if you're important to me, just think how much more important you are to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God don't make mistakes. God created you just the way you are. Amen. Instead of trying to this or that, let's start praising God for who we are, for what we are. We are to be worshipers of our Lord. We are to love each other equally. We are to care for each other equally. We are to be concerned. Margie's not here with us. We need to be concerned for her. And there might be others that are not here for whatever reason. We need to be in, in, in concerned for them too. We have a young couple who's going to be getting married Friday right here at 6 o'clock. You want to come? Come. <coughs> So we see in life change. We see in great things happen. But this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. But we can't do it by ourselves. We've got to have the power of the Holy Ghost, but we need you too. We can't do nothing without the power of the Holy Ghost. And greater things than these you shall see. We need to believe by faith. It's impossible to please God without faith. Amen. You can't do it. And like I said, I'm quite satisfied where we're at. But I'm not quite satisfied where the church is at yet. Amen. Because there are plenty more people out there that need to hear the love and the peace that can only come from Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And my heart is, is for them. My heart is for y'all, but my heart is with them. We need to bring more in. Amen. 
If we bring them in and God, God heals them or saves them or whatever God does, delivers them, and God says it's time for them to go somewhere else, we need to send them out. Under the love and, and, and inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Let's talk about finding fault for here for just a minute, though. I believe this is a message that we all need to hear. Too many times we miss out simply because we doubt. Nathaniel said, can any good thing come from Nazareth? Nathaniel found fault before he even found the truth. Many times we're guilty of that. We can be baptized in the Holy Ghost. We can speak in tongues. We can do whatever. We can lay hands and people are healed. But at, at times we find fault. And that ought not be. You are a believer. You are a believer. Put your trust and faith in the one who gives faith and truth. And that's Jesus Christ. Amen. God gave us spiritual gifts. Why? Because he knew we needed them. If he didn't think we needed them, he wouldn't have put it in the New Testament. We need them. Amen. We need them. Amen. Amen. All right. But Nathaniel said, can anything good come from that world? God has many great and good things for his children. Amen. And it's happening now. Amen. I see the egg that is holding believers. And by the way, an egg, when a chick gets ready to hatch, that chick is, is, pe is pecking at the inside of the egg, which gives them protein, which in turn gives them strength, and by their pecking, they're exercising their muscles because when they get out, they, they're ready to go. Amen. I see a lot of people right now are pecking, and the Holy Ghost is giving you the protein, the spiritual protein that you need, that when you break out the shell, you are ready to go. Amen. Amen. I believe that, and I see that here right now. How many here can feel it in your own self right now? I feel it myself. I want to get closer to God. I got a little dog, Patches. That little dog loves me. And I used to think little Patches would like to get in my mouth because they want some food that I had. That's not the case. Little Patches loves me so much, he just she just wants to get closer to me. And that's the way it is with me and God. I want to get closer to God. I need to get closer to God. I need to eat the protein of the Holy Ghost, to get the Holy Ghost power to be able to live a victorious life. Amen. 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 Praise God. But God has many great and good things for His children. But for many, way too many, they miss out simply because they doubt. They don't believe. They find fault. They find fault with themselves. Therefore, they miss out. Fortunately, though, here's the key of the message. Fortunately, though, Nathaniel went to meet Jesus. He went to see for himself. Can any good come from Nazareth? Well, he said he found fault, but yet he wanted to go make sure his fault was true. And he went to see the one who is true. He went to see the one who gives life. He went to see the one who gives spiritual gifts. He went to see the one who heals. He, he went to see the one who makes marriages strong. He went to see the one who has defeated Satan on the cross of Calvary. He went to see the truth and the only true truth and that true truth is Jesus Christ. I'm going to, I'm going to buy Jack tomorrow. Amen. That's where I was born. I was born in Visa, right close by. My aunt passed away. The funeral, the, the cemetery, I used to go to a one-room school right there. Now it's Bio Jack Cemetery. I'm going to uh, uh, participate in the funeral of my aunt. Amen. But I got good news. Through the blood of Jesus Christ and her belief in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Her body is the only thing that's left, and it's going back to the ground according to, uh, 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 anyway, let's go on. And her spirit is with the Lord right now. Amen. Amen. But that's the hope that we have as born-again believers. Amen. Amen. And that's very important. Oh, yes. Amen. 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 Nathaniel, Nathaniel went to meet Jesus and became his disciple. If Nathaniel had stuck to his prejudice without investigating fuller, he would have missed out on the Messiah. 
He would have missed out on all the good things that God had for him. The world will tell you, you know what? You get saved and you got a problem. No, world. No, world. When you get saved, you don't have a problem. World, you have a problem. Amen. The world's got the problem. Amen. I tell you what, I got the power and authority of Jesus Christ. When the devil starts shooting darts at me according to Ephesians, I got a, I got a shield right here. And when those fiery darts hit that shield, all they do is bounce off and hit the floor, hit the ground. We got power in Jesus Christ. Don't become a Christian and be afraid Satan's going to attack you. If you're not saved, Satan's already attacking you. Amen. Amen. You know, he's already got you. That's right. Praise God. Amen. I got power not because of who I am, but rather because of whose I am. Amen. 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 Jesus. Amen. 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 We got victory. You know, when I was 18, 19 years old, I was in the Army, United States Army, active duty, stationed in Germany. Praise God. Well, I'm not 19 anymore. I can't do the things that I used to do when I was 19. And I'm going to tell y'all something right now. There are things that I did when I was 19 I don't want to do anymore. Yeah. I'm going to be right where I'm at right now because Jesus Christ has got something greater for you. And he's got something greater for this church. And he's got something greater for me. He's got something greater for our nest. Tiana, you're being healed right now as we're talking in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, y'all ready for that? Yes. Let's lay aside all, I mean all prejudice. If we can't love our brother or our sister, how in the world can we love the one who created them? Amen. 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 We need to get together and start knocking Satan right off his high horse. Yeah. That's just one of those rocking horses we love. <laughs> Praise God. Be given glory. Amen. He said, can anything good come from there? Verse 46. And you know something? I, I, I like this one. I, I, I just like it. And Nathaniel, Nathaniel said unto him, can there any good thing come? Just come and see. He didn't argue with him. They didn't talk for four days and three nights and one minute. One trying to prove something to the other. He said, come and see. Come and see. Open up the Word of God. Come and see what Amen. God is saying. Amen. Amen. You don't need to argue the Word. The Holy Ghost can take care of that. Have you ever believed the Holy Spirit is a whole lot smarter than me and you? Amen. 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 I don't have to argue. All I got to do is say, Jesus loves you. Amen. He said, come and see. There was something that Nathaniel had to do. The time of the same old thing was about to come to an end. The old way was about to end. A new beginning was about to, I like a new beginning. The new beginning was about to start. How about y'all? How about a new beginning for you right now? Well, I'm too old. I'm too young. I know you right at the right place at the right time. Just give your heart to Jesus. Amen. I've had enough of the old. I want the new. Amen. Praise God. I want everything that God has for us. Amen. I want it. And God is speaking right now as I'm speaking. God is speaking to someone in particular. And if it's you at the end of the service, I want you to rise up. Because if you rise up and God is speaking to you right now and you rise up, I believe you're going to receive it because you're not ashamed of what God is doing. Amen. Amen. We've got to let all that go. We've got to let all that go. Don't be ashamed to say I'm a Christian. Amen. Jesus wasn't ashamed when they nailed him to a tree. They literally nailed him to a tree. Amen. Jesus wasn't ashamed of you when you was in your sin. Amen. Jesus still went to the cross for you. Amen. Don't be ashamed. Amen. They can call you a sissy. They can call you whatever they want to call you. They can call you a religious freak. Well, I ain't no religious freak. freak. I'm really not. I'm a Jesus. Amen. They can call me what they want to. You go to church three times a week, you give 10% of your money. I do more than that. Because the more you give, the more God gives. Amen. You want healing? Turn it over to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Nathaniel heard about what was going on. Now he had a decision to make to stay where he was. Or to go where Jesus was. Friends, 
Life within itself is a life of change. Like I said, when I was 19, I'm not 19 anymore. I had to change. I didn't have no choice. I used to have long hair. And Mike put a picture on the wall when me and I just got married. And, you know, but you know what? I used a lot of grooming clean. I don't have no hair today. I don't use grooming clean. I got more money to give to God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You should smoke. I quit smoking. You know why I quit smoking? They went up to 36 cents a pack. I said, I ain't paying that kind of money for those tobacco that blur it up. Amen. Amen. I don't know what it is now, but it do not bother me one bit because I don't use the stuff. Praise God. Give it more. Hallelujah. Somebody said, well, what do you do when you quit? Do you put a patch on or this on or that? I said, no. No. I said, no. God said it's time to quit. I quit and that was it. I didn't go to counseling. I didn't go to this. I didn't go to therapy. I just quit. And I kept my 36 cents. It was three dollars and sixty cents a carton. That's for ten packs. They kept their cartons, and I kept my three dollars and sixty cents. And I want you to know, God blessed me with our marriage, and she has taken care of it. You don't have that too much on that. <laughs> no, I got married sweetly. Nothing stayed the same, brother and sister. I'm watching two little girls after that, watching two little girls before the boy broke. Right before my eyes. They're beautiful kids. I watch out for the girl. We all grow. We all grow. Does your hair, girl. Huh? Does your hair. When she walked, it was a it was a Metairie Baptist church. And it was in the evening, and when they opened the door to the church, the bright sunlight come in. And there she come. And I said, oh my gosh, Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> you see, I didn't have that. People don't believe it, but I did. <laughs> but anyway, let's get on past it. The decision that he made that day affected his tomorrow and of course, his eternity. How many times do we allow others to have an effect on our decision making? That in turn stops us from entering into the best that God has for us. For too many times as born again believers, we settle for the good when God has the best just waiting for us. And I believe God has just the best for some people right now. Just turn it over to Jesus. Somebody would say, Preacher, that's pretty hard to do. Yes, it is. If you got a million dollars, it'd be pretty hard to turn it over to Jesus. If you got a dollar, you wouldn't have much of a problem. Mm. Don't think money is the answer. Money's not the answer. Mm. We've got to have money, but we've got to have it the right way. Okay. Y'all with me again? Amen. Mm. Let's don't settle for the good one. God is blessing some people right now. Okay, let's go on. Amen. Just come and see. Philip was wise. Like I said, he didn't argue. He just simply said, come and see. The positive side of Nathaniel was that he wanted to prove all things. He didn't take spiritual things lightly. After saying this many times, we have to lay aside what we think about certain things in order to find out how things really are. Sometimes the things we really want is not the things we need. Amen. We've got to give God a chance to work. Amen. Sometimes, many of us, including myself, have a microwave mentality. Right. We want to pray, press 30 seconds, and when the dean goes off, we want our answer. We don't get our answer, we get mad. We get mad at God. Why me, God? Why me, God? Why me? I prayed God, and 30 seconds passed, and you have an answer. You might not hear me. God hears you. 
God hears all prayers according to the Word of God. He hears everything. Jesus right now is at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. When we pray, we pray this morning. When we pray, Jesus hears it. He's presenting it before, before the Father. And the prayers are answered. I want to tell you something right now. Your prayers are answered. The time might not be right. You might need to do some changes in your life. The person, the person you're praying for might need to do changes in their life. But God hears your prayers. God is answering your prayers. We have to have faith to believe that God hears, that God answers, that whatever we think we need might not be what we need, but God knows it. And God is pouring out His Spirit upon all flesh. But we have to be patient with God. Almost like this. Lord, I need a 5,000 minimal church. Woo, I'll be big. Ooh, give me 25,000, I'll be even bigger. <laughs> but the sad part about it, God's got me right where He wants me. Because if I had 5,000 or 25,000 people, they might throw me off tomorrow. Hey, I'll get a good picture, though. But anyway, God knows what's best. I would rather be here watching the Holy Ghost work than to be somewhere where they don't even know who the Holy Ghost is. Amen. We went to a big church, Ben on as I was called out of that church. I was licensed. I was ordained out of that church. But the pastor said there's two things he won't preach on. He won't preach on the Holy Spirit and he won't preach on demons because he's going to make some people uncomfortable and he don't want to cause any problems in the church. I say, brother, it's about time for you to leave, brother. It's about time to cause a little trouble. we got to stir the people up because the Holy Ghost is real and demons are real. The Holy Ghost gives you the power to overcome the demons and we don't want to talk about the power that we have. Where are we going? We ain't going Y'all with me on that? Amen. Man, we got to break out of that shell of what we think, we, who we are, what we need to do. We need to break out of that shell and let God help. Amen. Yeah. We break out that shell. You're going to see the power of God working mm -hmm. Amen. in your life, in your family's life, Amen. the life of this church. And I want to share something with you. I believe God has given me permission. We're going to see prisons open up. Mm -hmm. We're going to see prisons open up. And we're going to see the people there, mm -hmm. whether it's a women part or the men part, and we're going to see you like an Acts home. Y'all with me on this vision? Y'all with me on this vision? Just like in the book of Acts. The prisons are going to open up. Because the Holy Ghost is going to come down like a cove and tongues of fire. And it's going to touch each one individually. They're going to get saved. They're going to get transferred. And what they were, they are no longer. And what they're going to be, God's got them right now. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. Instead of finding fault, instead of doubting, let's enter into the presence of God and receive all the blessings that God has not only for us, but God has stored for us. In Amen. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.